All right. Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and in case you are new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe first and we are continuing our series with the backend development. So we have a comment target as well on this video, just nothing much, just 50 comments would be good enough to boost my motivation so that I can keep on producing such videos, such high quality production level content. So in this video, uh, as you, if you remember, in the last video we saw a hiccup that we cannot log out a user because we don't have the user information. Surely there are a couple of ways how we can do it and one of the easy way you might be thinking, hey, we have the access to access token. We can actually look into his cookie, grab the access token and just decode it and extract the user ID from it. Yeah, great, great thinking if you're thinking from that perspective. It's actually a good one. But how long we are going to be doing that? Because every single time a route that is being protected or I don't want anybody to access it, I have to protect some of these routes. So it can be only be accessed by somebody who has the access token or who is already logged in. So this is a common repeatable stuff. We surely can do it in the logout route, but there is a better way of doing it so that if anybody comes in, I can just have everything predetermined or pre-set up. Let me walk you through the easy way how it's being done in, in the setup and stuff. So let's just go up here. So what happens in this case is, again, let's just say we have this user coming up. So let's go ahead and have this one. Uh, you are a user. So there we go. User, nice and easy. Now, obviously, this user will also come to the server and will hit some of the controller. Now, this box is not representing the server, but rather representing one or the other controller. So let's just call this one as controller. There we go. And there would be many controller before that. Now, one common way is that this user has this access token. So we can go ahead and call this one as access. Every single time a request comes up, I go into the user, take this access controller. I go ahead and convert that. I verify that and I extract the ID from it or just to keep it as a reference underscore ID because that's what we have been calling it. And then verify it that whether the user is proper or not. Now, another proposition which I'm suggesting to you as a solution is to have some concept known as middleware. Now, what are these middleware? Before hitting the controller, what we can do is we can run some piece of code and this code on behalf of us is going to every single time the whole job of is, it can be any job, but in our case, the job is going to be take this access token. And once you have this access token, what we're going to do is we are going to decode that all of the logic will be exactly same. But if you remember, we have two things, request and the response. So what we're going to do is take this request, which is again, request, what is request? It's an object. So in this object, we're going to go ahead and just inject this ID here. So we're going to call this one something like this. ID is going to be equal to underscore ID. So this could be done here. The simple process of injecting some code or some logic in between is known as middleware. So our request is going to come up something like this. Every single time a request comes up, we're going to inject some piece of code into it. So that code first goes up here and then we automatically forward the request onto whatever the controller it needs to go. I'll walk you through the whole setup of it, but this is the basic gist of it at what we are about to do. The step one is to write this controller and this, not just the controller, we usually call this as a middleware and that's the whole concept. Perform something in between, perform something in the middle and that's why we call it as middleware. That's the whole idea. Now let's go ahead and uh, yes, we can do all of that logic in here as well. There is no problem at all. There is no logical flaw in that, but it's a better approach because this whole thing I need to do again and again. And in the software we run with the principle of dry, don't repeat yourself. So how we can actually achieve that? It's actually comparatively very, very simple to do so. Let's just close everything uh, for the meanwhile and I'll walk you through how you can actually inject that middleware in the routes as well, because that's one new knowledge for you. All right, let's go ahead and uh, just remove everything, not remove, shrink everything. And the next step is take the middleware, create a new file into it, and we're going to call this one as auth because it's an auth middleware. It's a common practice to call this one as whatever the middleware is doing. It's not always required that it is going to do auth. There are lots of other activities that it does. But in this case, we're going to call this one as auth middlewares.js. Once we are into this auth middleware, how we can work with that? So the common steps are, I'm going to use JWT. I'm going to uh, decode the things, verify with the JWT. I'm going to use user as well to make a web request. And apart from this, I'm going to use API error to send some errors if they are. A sync handler is going to be utilized. So rest of the st stuff are going to be pretty standard. So first of all, let's go ahead and uh, have this JWT from JSON Web Token. I'm going to import 
uh, API error as well, but first let's import the user. I'm gonna go ahead and say user, and user is going to come up from one directory back. I'll go inside the models. I don't trust that much of the AI, especially in the import syntax. They can be really bad. I don't trust them that much. Uh, they're good to have, and this one is going to be usermodel.js. All right, that's my user, uh, API error, and a sync await. So we're gonna go ahead and say API error. Looks okay, API response. No API response, I don't need API response. I need the API error. Import, and what we need is API error, and that's going to come up from utils API error.js. Let me verify that. Utils API error.js, yeah, decent stuff. We also need a sync handler, so a sync handler is also going to come up from the utils a sync handler.js. Uh, looks decent, if there would be any problem or issue, we can just work with that. Now, coming up onto the logic part, how we're gonna write the logic of it. First of all, we're gonna just export this. We're gonna call this one as, oops, where is my keyboard? Export const, and I'm gonna call this one as verify, uh, JWT, that's the name. I'm gonna use a sync handler just like this. It's a simple method, we go like this. Then we simply go ahead and use a sync. Then we can use like this. This one is going to have a request. Uh, this one also is going to have a response, but since we are not doing anything with the response, it's a common practice to just call it as underscore because we are not gonna be using it. The most important part, because we want to transfer the flow. So the flow now is going to come here first, and in order to mark that this flow needs to be transferred further to whatever the controller it is going forward for, we need to have one more variable here, which is known as next. And once you are done with whatever you want to do with this request, Executing this next is the most important part, no matter what happens. So we're gonna go work like this, there we go. Now coming up the uh, the logic part. Simple logic, just like what we did here. So if I just open up my controllers, and if I open up user controller, how did we work with the access token? We first grabbed the token, we decoded that, we, find, we found out a user with that, and then we updated it. That's exactly what we want to do here as well, almost exactly same. First, let's grab the token. So we're gonna go ahead and say, hey, give me a token. And that token can come up from the request uh, cookies as well, or can come up from the body as well. But here's the interesting part. I'm not looking for anything else. I'm just looking for the access token. Now this is okay that the request token might come up in the access cookies. That's the step one, if it is coming from the web. It might also come in the body as well, but I want to show you there is one more way of how usually this token comes up. It usually doesn't come in the body. Even if you're working with the mobile app, there is one more way how it comes up. Let me show you that. So in the Postman, whenever you're making any request, so let's just say we work with any request, you can just open up, or we can just open up a new request as well. Let's call this as HTTP. What you're going to notice here is, if you just click on the headers, sometimes, uh, some of the stuff comes up in the header as well. Especially, there is a special name given to that header where the access token can come up automatically. And there, you can just go ahead and add a key. As you can see, there is an automatic key here, authorization. And the way how you put up your access token, because remember, it's a, just a large string of tokens. You go ahead, the way how you write it is simply first, you go ahead and say bearer. So I'm a bearer, that's a keyword. It remains always same. Then you put up a space and then you write whatever the token name, this looks like this token, so something like this. And this is how you send the request, especially the mobile phones also send a request just like this. So you need to grab a header and find out the name of it, the key of it, which is authorization, and then the value of it. This is so much of a common practice that in the Postman, if you just click on authorization, they actually give you this option automatically, the bearer token, not the JWT bearer, bearer token. So notice here, all you gotta do is just click up here. This is my old key, I've already removed that, so nothing to worry. Here, you just paste the token. The automatic, whenever the request is going to send, it is going to automatically authorize the header or add a header named authorization. We'll put bearer and a space in front of it and then the token will be sent. So this is a common practice. So just to make sure that you can accept the cookies, you can keep on as many or as you wish. You can have access in the cookies, in the body, or I can show you the request header part as well. So you can go ahead and say, hey, this is how you get the access to the header. And once you, and remember, this is not headers as long as I remember, but sometimes you gotta go ahead and check it. So let's do a little bit of the research uh, together because as long as I remember, it was just header, I guess. But we're gonna go ahead and say request 
header express. This is how you do research work. And I'm going to go in the docs. And I want to have the headers. So we're going to go ahead and request. And let's just search for headers. If we can find this, let me just go ahead and search for it. Headers. So there we go. If I can just find it more. Request header. Set headers. Set headers. No, I want to see the request headers. Ah, there's so much of the incident. Uh, let's go back up here. Oops. How to extract HTTP headers. It's always a good idea to just look for it. Uh, some of the docs. This is how everybody does the research. It's not just only me. Oh, it's it's like this. Request.headers. So, okay. Guess I'm wrong there. It's headers. And yeah, sometimes it's good to ask even ChatGPT about that. I'll just verify it from a couple of more resources. And I think express five request.get. No, not really. All right, looks like it's headers. And yes, it makes sense. Oh, there's a nice question. Request.header. Headers. When I'm using the below concept, yeah, this is the one I'm looking up for. Oh, this is recommended. And this is not recommended. All right, and this is the point where I actually pause this, read what they want to say, and that's how you enhance your knowledge. Uh, the difference between request headers, uh, the object, and the request.header, the function is simply this. If you want to get a property from JavaScript object, the property name is case sensitive. So request.header content type will work. Request.header content type will not work. Oh, that's the new information. Together we have learned that. So request.headers and request.headers will not work. So we're gonna go ahead and use just the header. All right, good information. I really like to keep such things raw so that you learn along with me that, hey, this is how we face the problem. This is how we go ahead and grab it. So I'm going to go ahead and say request.header just like this. And I'll just go ahead and say, hey, I want to use authorization just like this. And after that, this will give me the whole token. But what I want to do after that is I want to replace some of the stuff. And again, I would optionally decode this. Replace the word bearer and a space. This is space is being miss seen by a lot of beginners, don't do that mistake. And this is going to be replaced by nothing. So at the end of the day, if the token is coming up from the header, we just store that in the token. Now, if you don't have token, what do you do? You just check it. So if we can just go ahead and say, if we if we don't have a token, we simply go ahead and send up a response that, hey, uh, nothing, unauthorized request or something like that. So this is the part where you don't have the token. Now, the next step is to decode the token. As I mentioned, this could really uh, end up not the way we want it to be. So the step one is to decode it. So we're going to go ahead and verify this. So verify, this takes the token that we have extracted and we will need the environment variable for access token secret. Once we have grabbed that, then we want to store that and we want to access that. So we're going to call this one as decoded token. So this one looks good. Once we have this decoded token, what's the next step? Grab the user. Now you have decoded information. Grab the user, request a query from the database, and get it back. Since it's a database query, I'm going to go ahead and say await user find by ID, and we're going to decode the token with the ID. But not only that, I don't want all the information. I would love to chain it up with the select as well so that we actually don't get the password or the refresh token. It's of no use for me. So I'm just going to go, go ahead and remove it. And I'm going to go ahead and store that into a variable. OK, that's my first step. Now, what do I do want to do after that? Of course, I would love to check whether the user actually came in or not. So let's go ahead and quickly check this. If there is no user, then go ahead and throw the response. That's great. But what's really important is, since I'm into this function, if you remember, we have access to this request, which is nothing more. It's just a big object. And that is why we were able to extract information from it on different cases and scenarios. For example, if I go up here, show you that, yeah, this is request. Where is it? Yeah, request. This request has one more parameter known as body. There could be more parameters. We saw request.cookies. There is so much more we can do here. Just like we can extract existing information, we definitely go ahead, can go ahead and add more information to it. So one good information would be request.user. We create a new parameter and just assign it with the user that we extracted from the database. Now it has all the information. And this information is happening all in the middleware in this part. But I have to now transfer the request and the flow of the control of this from middleware to the controller. 
this side. Yeah, controller. <laughs> there, there it is. So I need to go ahead and do that. So how can we do that? Really simple. You just go ahead and transfer. Whenever you want to transfer the flow control, you go ahead and say next. That's it. Totally super easy. Now let's go ahead and handle the error part as well. We're going to go ahead and say throw new API error unauthorized invalid access token. We're going to go ahead and say error message as well. Let's go ahead and try something fancy here. We can go ahead and extract the error. Optionally decode a message from it. Message, message. And if the message is not there, then we're going to go ahead and say invalid. Invalid access token. So there we go. Uh, we just throw up the error. You are trying to access a resource which is not supposed to be accessed by you. So you can really get a good message up here. Now this is it. This is it. This is all what we want to do. Hey, and in the error part, we really want to crash or not crash, but handle it gracefully. That's it. Now, at this point, we have a new request. So at this point, I can just go ahead and say request dot user. We have a new additional information in the request. Now in the controller, obviously this controller will further pass it on and you will have the information request and the response. You have access to this. But at this point now, what you can do is you can have an access of request.user and can grab all the information from it. It has everything, your access token, refresh token. It doesn't have refresh token, uh, but you get the point. There is a lot that can be done with this user and you have the ID. The main part is you have underscore ID and you can do whatever you like. Now we can go back and try to do more stuff with it. So what more you want to do? We want to uh, further move on with the logout information now. Now let's go ahead and work with that. This middleware part is done. Let's go back onto the user controller. We come back onto the part where we do the logout. There we go. Now I can just go ahead and remove this. Now, if you remember, we have this access to request. I can just go ahead and access anything inside it. So now my further information of find by ID and update, since I have access to this request, I can go ahead and access the user. Further down, I can just use underscore ID. So it has a proper access to the ID that I want. Now, once I've done this, I have found the record in the, in the database by using this user. The next step is to simply set the refresh token to undefined. And there are a couple of ways, uh, depends on what version you are working with the MongoDB. There are a couple of ways how to do this. So what we can do is we can just go ahead and set it like this. And I can just go ahead and have it like this. So one common way is to, this is bad. Don't want this suggestion. So one common way is handle it like this. And then you can use a variable dollar set, which is going to set it to a new field. And this is way. What field do you want to use? I want to use the field of refresh token. What do you want to set it? Now, again, no harm in setting up as an empty string. Sometimes what works is null and sometimes depends on what database version you are in and what version of Mongoose you are dealing up with that. Uh, what you're going to commonly notice is undefined works well. Uh, in most cases, but again, you have to check it out. This is where I'm saying the series is not about just copying and pasting what I'm doing. The series is more about you learn things on the go. You do research, you learn how to learn. That's the most important part. So once this is all done, now what we're going to do is this whole thing, user.findbyid, this has one more parameter that you can actually inject. And that simply says that, do you want me to return the previous record, which is not being updated, or you want to return this fresh information? So we can just pass on this new true, and it will give me the fresh information. Now, since we are not storing this information anywhere, we actually don't need to. You can store that, but it's not going to be used anywhere. The next step is I have handled the database part in the logout. The next part is just release the cookies or just make it all good. Now, since we are using this options quite a lot, I think it would be nice if we go ahead and put this options uh, on somewhere onto a global file or something because I realize I'm using it quite often. All right, anyways, you can also do this. You can refactor the code a little bit like that. Then we're going to go ahead and simply say return response. You know me, I do a status like this always. And we can simply set a status of 200. And then I can go here, hit an enter. And there we go, nice and easy. And then clear the cookies. So for this, we can use a method of clear cookie. And this clears the cookie one by one. So we have to first clear the access token, then we have to set the refresh token. Remember, when you don't pass the option, uh, the second option, it doesn't set it to anything, it just refresh this. That's how the clear cookie works. Set cookie is different. 
Once this is all being done, we can just go ahead and simply set a JSON just like this and new API response, 200 user logged out successfully. We don't need to pass on any object just like this, but we can if we wish to. Empty message that, hey, there's no data with us. Totally up to us how we want to handle this. So this is how you handle all these uh, in between part of it. And we would love to have this one, but it's not over yet. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> uh, this is not yet done. I'll just go ahead and have it export. So logout user is exported. Now this is the part one. You have gone through with how the middleware works and everything works, but one thing you haven't understood is how to use this middleware. We haven't used it. We have definitely exported this. This is the export code, but where we are injecting it, yeah, that's the point. The way how we inject it is actually not anywhere. It's in the routes. So I'll just open up the user routes. The step one is to bring up the access token, refresh token, whatever that whole thing is. So we need to import the verify JWT. So we're going to go ahead and say we want to import a verify JWT and middleware.js. All right. This is the most important part. And we have user registered user. We will have more of this one. The most important for us is logout user so that we can see how the secured routes are being handled. So I'll just create a category for them. By the term category, I mean to say simply a block with a comment. This is going to be our uh, secured routes. There we go. Thank you so much. Now, how do we want to configure our logout route? That's a name of the entire route, how you want to go with that. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say router dot route. Totally up to you which route you want to serve on. I think what makes sense is logout. That makes sense. Now, once we are in the logout, then what we have done so far, if you notice it at the top, we just simply go ahead and say dot post. Then we inject this middleware. Yes, this is a middleware also. And then we simply go ahead and put up a route. If this would be a regular route, I would have just simply say, hey, go ahead and do a post. And inside the post, we go ahead and bring up our controller. This is logout controller, logout user. But since this is a route, which is secured route, that means we need to inject our middleware first so that some processing can happen in between. That is why we actually go ahead and first say verify JWT that we have imported. And then we simply do that. So I hope this actually helps you to understand the flow. The request first goes through with the verify JWT. And this, this is the verify JWT. And then it gets the control over the controller. Now, it's not like you can just add one. You can add more of the controllers here. For example, you can just go ahead and call something. Another controller can be up here. The only thing that you have to remember with this is this next. So the next is responsible. It's a flag which which transfer the control from one controller to another, one middleware to another middleware or to the final route. So in this case, if we go at something like this, when you hit the next in the verify JWT, it will transfer the control in the sequence just like this. And once it is being done, then it will transfer the control here. In this case, we don't have this, but yeah, you got the point. All right, so this is, I guess, good enough uh, information. And you got the idea of how the auth middleware controllers, everything goes ahead and work with that. And my most important part is not to give you exactly the code file. Hey, this is the code file. Go ahead and run it and your project is spinning up. My goal is to teach you how to think, how to research, how to write the code. What's the logic behind it? What's the flow behind it? And that's what we are learning here. I hope this video gives you enough of idea about the middleware. If you enjoyed the video, uh, don't forget to subscribe and click a photo, share it with me on the Twitter or Instagram. That would be really helpful. That's it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one.